Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. no, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a terrible, like a terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to The Advocate. Five panelists and five freshly baked topics. No holds barred. Speaking of freshly baked, Bolaho is advocating that we crank up the oven when it comes to our national budget. Is it a case of Oliver Twist? Chuka is equally dissatisfied with the state of things. This time, he's asking us to get an education. Falashade, our fresh advocate and doctor in the house, wants to bring us into the 21st century as concerns mental health. Ekene makes an assertion that Nigerians are one of the wonders of the world. I wonder how many Nigerians would agree with her. Our population explosion is fast becoming a wonder. However, I'll be taking this on after the break. If it isn't nipped in the bud, the slender sapling eventually becomes a towering tree. Nigeria's population explosion, that is my topic this week. Last week, President Muhammadu Buhari presented the 2019 economic budget to the National Assembly. Having looked at the various allocations, it is hard to see how this budget will make any real difference in the lives of the rapidly growing Nigerian population, especially with no noticeable increase in resources. It is therefore time to look closely at our population explosion if we are to significantly improve our living standards and economic growth and development. According to researchcyber.com, Nigeria is the seventh most populated country in the world, with an annual population growth of about 31 million, with China and India ahead. An unchecked increase in human population invariably leads to an unhealthy struggle for survival, as there are many mouths to provide food, clothing, housing, healthcare, and education for, with not enough resources. It is no surprise that malnutrition, overcrowding, crime, and low life expectancy are all on the increase. Some of the causes of rapid population growth in Nigeria include the following, poor family planning, illiteracy, and ignorance, poverty, culture, religion, migration, urbanization, polygamy, and early marriage. There is therefore an urgent need for population control measures to a level that positively impacts our national development. Also desperately needed is mass education and awareness on population issues on a regular basis to let the public understand the effects of large families above family resources. There should be a significant increase in awareness on efficient and effective family planning methods, making them accessible, affordable, and feasible in order to encourage its use. And finally, there is need to encourage monogamy as against polygamy and discourage early marriage. Interesting. I was trying to work out how monogamy might lead to less Children, children yeah. <laughs> because it doesn't, it's not a direct thing. No, I was thinking, can uh, you see you, the connection but, though? Um, um, because I was just thinking to myself, if one, one woman went around different men, oh. then it will end up <laughs> But that's not, like, that's not the norm. Yeah, know, um, yeah well, d d uh, well, some have children. Baby and, mama. Uh, yeah, but you know, I was just wondering that, is it that, what will happen is that many women will supposedly go unmarried, is what you're saying. 
it's, would what? rather leave some women on the shelf. Oh, you think that's no, why no, you no, have no, polygamy? No, 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 no. I'm just saying that that's, uh, those are the kind of things that will happen, of course. You know, because well, if, that, we, if, we have, because angle. if we have polygamy, <laughs> it means that there's, there's women that want to be second, third, or fourth wives, not necessarily because they feel any low esteem or anything. It's just, I don't know, whatever. But what I'm saying is it means that we will have uh, uh, women on the shelf. Now, is that another problem, or is it okay? Wow. Okay. Uh, uh, that wasn't the angle I was going to come at you from. Not Socially, is it going to be another problem that we're going to deal with? The, the, well, the, there is a number side to that, yes. which is to say, what is the population of eligible men vis-a-vis -vis the eligible women? If we don't even have that number, mm. so we cannot begin to take a call on, on what you're suggesting. Okay. You know. um, but my, my, my worry is when you have an economy growing at 2% or 1.9% and a population growing at 2.6, 2.7%, we will continue to throw more people in the pool of poverty exactly. because the population mm -hmm. is growing faster mm -hmm. than the resources that are required to support them. Mm -hmm. So that, that is very fundamental to, mm -hmm. to, to the uh, uh, issue at, on, on the table. Mm -hmm. I felt that really we need to be looking at it as a public health concern. Right. And it relates very much to what we're going to talk about later in terms of my concern around mental health. Mm. The issue is, is that there is an increased risk of mortality when a woman has more than four children. Oh. And I went to check the stats, and actually in this country, the average um, birth rate for women here is 5.5. Mm. So already, you find out that there's increased mortality. Second thing I checked out is, we're, we actually have a national strategy on family planning and birth control, but I don't believe that it's um, been well articulated. Exactly. Apparently, there was a commitment in 2012 where there was supposed to be a, a, a program that ended in 2020 with the aim that by 2018, 38% I believe of our pop, female population should be using contraception. Now, I have to say that I've not heard of that and I'm a medic. Um, and I, I, I wonder, therefore, how, many, how, how this is being articulated, how this is being rolled out on a state level, mm -hmm. on an indiv individual level. Um, also, the funding that goes with it. I was speaking to a pharmacist yesterday who said, actually, she actually educated me that family planning, contraception is actually quite cheap. Mm. But the challenge becomes about our, our, our perception of that. She said she spoke to a woman who told her that, you know, you have to get all the children out. For as long as she sleeps <laughs> with her husband and she conceives, she believes that it's the right thing to have those children. So I think there needs to be, you know, more work on rolling out or allowing everybody to know about this national strategy mm -hmm. and psychoeducation. Yeah. Okay, no, 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 no. I mean, I, I think I'll have a slightly different position to, to mm -hmm. what I've heard so far. Mm -hmm. And clearly it's, it's responsible to not just have children, but have a plan for your children. Mm -hmm. um, but I've always believed, and I'll always believe, unless I'm given other, I don't think I'm likely to be convinced otherwise, that children are a blessing. And the more you have, have as many as you like. And I, I'm, I'm an advocate of have as many as you like, simply because I just see that Human beings will never be the, the problem. It's how you um, equip those human beings to be an asset. Because at the end of the day, w when we come to maybe other advocacies, we'll see that some of the ways you get revenue is by taxing the population. So if you have a, a large uh, population and you empower them to be productive, they become your resource. They become an asset to you. Yes. And most people that have the population we have at an average of a youthful population will be excited because they'll think, wow, mm -hmm. we have a human resource that people are looking for and begging for. The problem is we haven't invested in them. So I appreciate that where we are currently, it looks like the population is working against us rather, rather than, than working for us. For us so yes. yes, I think we should, in terms of public health and even you know, social health, if you like, yeah. people should be uh, made to appreciate that human resource and having a child is a, is a, is a blessing. And somehow, grow your, grow your, when you're having a child, you look for ways to invest in that child from the get-go, make sacrifices. When I see people sending their children out to beg on the streets, I'm saying, what parents, even if you were poor, will send your child out to beg and then you stay at home. Mm. Somehow the police should follow those children to the house and make those parents accountable for the children they're having. So I just feel you, you don't even have to have more than two children to show neglect for mm -hmm. the one or two mm -hmm. children. So I want to look at more of the sense of responsibility towards the children rather than, because I think at the end of the day, it's good to say, look, inform people, let them make an informed choice. But I don't really, I'm not a, an advocate for take away that choice or impose mm -hmm. a restriction on their ability to have right. as many children mm -hmm. as they want. Quite, well, I, I mean, I, I think from my advocacy, I wasn't trying to no, take away from any. That way. It was really mm -hmm. just putting in measures. You know, I think more about educating people so that they can make the right choices. Um, we had a, a cook who 
had 11 children and he's not able to send, there's only one child that's going to school out of the 11 children. Wow. And that child, he's not even the one that's paying for that child to, to go to school. Mm -hmm. And then he has all these boys that do nothing but turn to crime and just cause, because they're not working. Mm -hmm. So, and, and when, you know, my aunt, who's a nurse, spoke to this cook and said, you know, have you considered family planning and, and things like that? He was like, what? what? What is that? You know, it's, it's, so that mindset is not even there for many families. And they're just producing all these children. And, and when you ask them, who's going to take care of these? They say, God. God yeah. meaning the rest of the us, rest of obviously, us. Yeah. because yeah. that's how it's going to happen. Yeah. No problem at all. But the point is, make informed choices. Mm -hmm. Don't bring children into the world so they can become beggars for you. You know, don't, don't bring them into the world so you can use them as a way to increase your revenue. Sacrifice, like you said, for mm -hmm. your children. Yeah. I really don't care how many pe children people have. Just... Don't, take care don't, of them. Yeah, take have care of them plan. and then don't make them a burden on society. Don't right. make them criminals because... Effectively, that's what they end up being when they're not working. Ha, ha, or however, school. because of the situation we find ourselves in today, that the country isn't working, mm. much as I would love to agree with um, Ekene, mm. I have to say that for now, we, we have must to put check in it. measures. Mm. You know, there's such a thing as you put in measures. This man has just closed the borders. I don't think he's going to close them forever. But he thinks he's doing a good thing, and he's closing it for a reason. So mm. we have to do something now, and we can release it later, and you can have the seven you want. Mm. You know? All right. Well, advocacy is also about foresight and prevention. Interestingly, Bolahan looks at another angle of the population and provision challenge. He says it's time to bake a bigger cake. Interesting. <laughs> 